Hi, class. We're going to talk now, or I'm going to explain to you uh, the way deportation at breakfast has been studied and what scholars and professors and others have said about it. And you have done a great job discussing the story. It's not one that has quite as much of a surprising outcome as the lottery or or especially Hills Like White Elephants, wait till we get to that one. Those are both shocking and confusing. And this one, it does leave a lot out as well. Remember Hemingway did not write this one, but he inspired a lot of people who came after him. Hemingway had what we call the iceberg theory, where you just give the reader the tip of the iceberg and let them figure out what's underwater. Let them figure out all the rest of it. And Foundation does that here as well. He also has a lot of just blank description, very little reflection or, or looking back or describing emotions or anything, just kind of a dramatic point of view where you just say what happens. That's a Hemingway inspiration as well. So we get a lot of description in this story and nothing really happens except for describing until... About halfway through, the eggs were spread out on the griddle, the bread plunged inside the toaster when the authorities came in. So it goes from just all this sort of everyday description, and then we have our sort of our, we call this the point of attack, maybe the climax of the story, the high point of the story. The point of attack comes right before the climax. It's the high point of the action. And Javier doesn't even say a word. He doesn't argue or resist. So this may show that he's expected this for a while. Maybe he knew that he was going to be taken away. And, you know, we used to be able to talk about this story for the last 15 years or so that I've been teaching it without as much in the news about it. We were not talking so much about deportation as we are today. So I hope it's not too painful a subject for anyone who uh, may know someone who's going through it. It's, it's a very timely topic, though, for sure. So the people in the restaurant seem not to notice. And there's a message there. And Larry Foundation, the author of the story, chose elderly people to be in the restaurant. They seem not to have noticed his exit. There's a larger meaning there. It means then that these people either don't care or they're not paying the kind of attention that maybe the author wishes they would. These are people who may be able to make a change or do something about it, but nobody seems to step in. It's kind of like the lottery. We want change. We want people to be treated reasonably, but we don't really do anything about it. You could, you could decide if, if maybe that's where the author is going with this. It does end up with sort of a comic relief ending that he ends up taking over the place. It seems almost like the story went from being rather serious to Maybe I don't want to make it so serious. And it's short enough that it, it kind of has a but um bum ending. There's no way I could run this place alone. It's really smart and unique. And, you know, it's a fun read, even though it's a tough topic. So he really has a little bit of everything in this. Why didn't he hire a waitress? Maybe I'd take a help wanted ad. That makes us wonder certainly about the narrator and how he has so much time. If it's a, I've always assumed it's a man, but I realized sometime after teaching it that maybe I shouldn't assume that. Maybe it is a female, but uh, even the filmmakers, it's probably an acting class that put that film up in YouTube. They, they somehow decided that it's a male character as well, but it could be either. Okay. We also see that he is a news, he's reading a newspaper. He wears a suit in the film. So maybe some indication that he is on his way to work, but maybe he changes his mind. Uh, who knows? <laughs> Maybe he's looking for a job in the paper. Also, the uh, one of the things we said in the discussion board is that this one mentions only one word that gives any indication of where this is set, and that is washroom. It's about halfway through. So washroom is not a word we use in America, right? We, use, we say bathroom or lav or something like that, men's room, ladies' room. So uh, about halfway through, they say washroom, and that indicates Canadian, although Larry Foundation is from Los Angeles. <laughs> so why Canada? Who knows? Okay, lots of description, though, lots of uh, sensory details and all those that we mentioned on our literary terms quiz. Uh, Claris, I mentioned if you didn't see the post where I said it, a lot of people name businesses after something that sounds kind of all-American because they may be worried about racism or anybody 
feeling uncomfortable with a foreigner, you know, which is silly, but people still do feel uh, certain ways. And so he may have decided to call it Clara's or could be a relative, could be his mother or daughter. One of you said we often name businesses after our uh, relatives. Maybe it was called Clara's before he bought it. Maybe he doesn't own it. Maybe there is a Clara somewhere and he's just the manager We or, or, or he just works there. We really don't know. I've had students say all kinds of things like maybe this is a front for something else. And that's why he's being taken away. So you can certainly use your imagination. And that's the beauty of it. Foundation leaves it up to us to decide who Clara is and what's going on there. So I think we did a good job explaining this one. And in class, we usually talk about it a little bit more because we're trying to figure out what's going on with Javier. I think we talked a lot about that in the discussion board. He takes pride in his work. You know, he's wearing chef's white. Usually we see like, you know, chili pepper pants and a Metallica t-shirt in, in a diner. We don't see chef's white, right? So it's, it gives us the sense that he does take pride in what he does. And isn't that one of the biggest arguments about immigration is that people who come here from other places are happy to do the jobs that a lot of Americans don't want to do. So would we want that job anyway? Could that be his message somewhere in here? Possibly. Is he sympathetic then to these immigrants who are doing you know, simple work, but taking pride in it and they're being taken away quickly and the rest of us don't even notice? Is he trying to sympathize? That's something to think about. Okay, we're gonna move on to our explanation of the lottery and our explanation of Hills Like White Elephants. So I hope you enjoyed our look at deportation at breakfast.